Hey guys, Todd here. Today we're going to install the Amp Research Power Step Vision on the 2021 body style F-150. The tools I'll be using for this installation are a ratchet with eight millimeter and 11 millimeter sockets, a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench, T25 Torx bit, three sixteenths Allen wrench, a drill with a pilot bit and a 1964 bit, a tape measure, wire stripper and crimper, and a heat gun. Now make sure you're subscribed to our channel to stay up to date with our latest content. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, now starting off, I wanna show you guys what kind of linkages you're gonna have. First of all, we've got our idler linkage. Uh, this is just going to stay idle at the back and do whatever the front is doing. Uh, then we have the motor linkage that has a gear attached to it. Now it's also got a cover. If that falls off, the way you wanna put it back on is make sure the tab goes back into the slot and it can go back on top. Uh, so what we're gonna do with our motor linkage is we're going to extend the linkage and then take a look at the gear on the inside. We want the gear on the inside to line up to the gear on the motor. Uh, we've also got three holes on that motor housing that's going to line up the housing on the bracket. And uh, make sure that you have the motor pointing up along with the, uh, the main portion of the bracket. So that's going in just like so. Um, you might have to wiggle the, uh, the linkage a little bit to get the gear teeth to line up. Uh, mine went in just fine. Uh, but now I'm gonna go ahead and put all three of my screws in place. And I'm gonna use a T25 Torx bit to kind of get them started. And then we're gonna run them down. Just don't over tighten these, just get them nice and snug. Now the linkage arm for the motor linkage on the opposite side is gonna be exactly the same as this. So go ahead and repeat the step for the opposite side. Okay, so here we are on the driver's side of the truck. We're just behind the driver's side front tire. This is our rocker panel. If you follow the inside of the rocker panel back, you're gonna come across three studs. Now these are here from the factory and, uh, and sometimes they've got some paint all over them. If they do have paint on them, you wanna take something like an aggressive wire brush or something like that and get that paint off of there. These are already fairly clean, so we're gonna go ahead and run with those. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna locate our driver linkage um, and we're gonna line up three of the holes on the driver linkage to those three studs. Now, as we do that, our motor is actually gonna probably push against a factory harness a little bit. So the best way to do that is we're gonna line up this top hole to the stud first. So kind of get that in there, get that hole lined up. And then once that's lined up, line up the other two and slide it in place. Okay, now on, on the hardware, what we're gonna do, we don't have a whole lot of room on this stud over here. So what we're gonna do is kind of pull back on that bracket just a little bit, slide the nut in place and get it started on the stud. And then we can go ahead and just run that down by hand first, as far as you can get it. If you've got a little bit of paint that's still on the stud, it might be a little difficult to do it, so you have to use tools. Uh, but then go ahead and uh, with the other studs install the nuts on there hand tight. And then what we're gonna use is a 13 millimeter. I'm using a ratcheting wrench. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this down with ratcheting wrench. This one and the one on top, we can use the ratcheting portion of the wrench. Uh, because of not enough room where, right where the motor linkage is, we're just gonna use the open end part of the wrench to tighten down. And we don't need to get these too tight. They only go to 12 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and move back to the rear linkage. All right, now we're moving back to the very rear of the cab. Uh, now we're gonna find three factory studs in the rocker panel. We did skip it towards the center of the cab, another three sets of studs. Uh, so this is the very rear. Now what we're gonna do is take our idler linkage and we're gonna line it up 
to those three studs. And just like on the front, we're gonna line up our uh, hardware, get that on there finger tight first, and then run it down again only to 12 foot pounds. So you don't need to over tighten these things. Now this one, because there's no motor linkage, we can get to all three of these with our ratcheting wrench. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and bring our running board up to the brackets and we're going to set it up on top of the brackets. Now before we attach it, what we're going to need to do is adjust it front and back. What needs to happen is the end of the end cap in the rear needs to be 11 inches from the end of the bracket. So we're going to go ahead and pull out a tape measure, measure off 11 inches. All right, once we've got it in place, we can go ahead and attach it to the brackets. So what I'm gonna do is rotate this up and you'll see you'll, you've got one of these for each one of the brackets. That's going to slide over and line up to the bracket. One for the passenger, or one for the rear bracket, one for the front bracket. And we're gonna rotate that back down and get that kind of dropped into place. And we've got two bolts in our kit. We're gonna go up through. We're gonna get them started in those holes. Use a 3 16 Allen wrench. I'll go ahead and get those put in place. Do the same on the front bracket. All right, now once we get everything tightened down on the front, we can go ahead and move to routing our wire. We're gonna bring our cable up here. Now you'll see there's an extruded channel. It runs right across here. So we're going to go ahead and route that wire up in through this channel in the bottom of the board. Now in our kit, we're also going to have these clips that clip into the channel that hold that wire in place. So we're going to put one right about here. And then we'll put one right about here. Now we can go ahead and route the wire up along the bracket. So what we have for these locations are some adhesive pads that are gonna hold the wire to the inside of that bracket. So what we gotta do is go ahead and clip the wire uh, into the, the adhesive pad to where it can get it in place. Um, then before we peel off the adhesive, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean out the channel where that wire is gonna go with some rubbing alcohol. We're also going to hit this location and this location up here. Let's go ahead and open up alcohol prep pad and clean out those three areas. So I'm going to go ahead and peel away the adhesive protector on the first clip. I'm going to bear down on that nice and tight to get a good bond. We're going to move up to the next one, do the exact same thing.
All right. Now we're done with this side, we can go ahead and repeat the exact same process with the board and the brackets on the passenger side. And that way we can get up into the engine bay and start running our harness. Okay, so here we are under the hood. Now I've got the harness kind of already laid out the way I want it for right now. There are three main legs that come off of the harness. One goes to the passenger side running board, one goes to the driver's side running board. I've got those set off to the side. The main leg right here is what we're going to be focusing on right now. And that's got our power and our ground. Now the power cable, we've got three different fuse holders. I've already gone ahead and pulled all three fuses out. We've got a 10 amp and two 30 amps. Now, if you pull those out and get them mixed up, no problem. The 10 amp fuse has a slightly smaller gauge wire that goes to it. Also, there's a different code at the bottom than the two 30 amp fuses. But this is our power cable. We're gonna tie this directly into our battery. And our negative, our ground, we're gonna bring that around kind of behind this right here and tie that into uh, this side of our fender. Uh, the side of our fender, we're gonna pull that off with an eight millimeter and then our battery, we're gonna go right here. We're gonna pull that off and connect with an 11 millimeter. So we're gonna go ahead and do the power first, then come back over here and do the ground. All right, and as I route the power, what I'm gonna do is kind of push this down uh, kind of into this little void right here so that these two plugs can be right back behind the battery because we're going to hit that next. All right, we're going to go ahead and snug this one back down. for our eight millimeter ground post. And we can snug that one back down. All right, next what we're gonna do, since this is all connected to the battery, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to these two parts of the main leg as well. Now, you'll notice we've got two different plugs here. We've also got two different controller modules. Now, the, each controller module is going to correspond to one of those plugs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna snap those in place. You'll hear it click when it snaps in all the way. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring these down and we're gonna tie them off with uh, some zip ties to our main battery harness. Let me get this out of the way here. All right, so now in your kit, you'll have four zip ties that are longer than all of the rest of the zip ties in your kit. Those zip ties are specifically for these controllers. And what we're gonna do is tie them both off uh, to the main harness on the other side of a battery. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, as I snug this down, you'll notice where I'm putting the zip tie is right on a groove cut into uh, the controller. And that's what they're designed to do, how they're supposed to align. Holds it in place very nicely. As we have the excess coming off, go ahead and snip that off. Work to the next controller. 
I'll bring that up. That's going to be kind of running down the harness a little bit now. those in place. All right, now let's go ahead and run the passenger and driver's side harnesses. What we're going to do is go to the leg on our harness that goes to our passenger side um, and get that routed. So we'll go ahead and grab this bundle here. Now this is the shorter leg of the two that are remaining. Also, there is no long yellow wire in there. If there's long yellow wire, that would go on the driver's side. Uh, so this is the passenger side. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of get this guy routed down, uh, down into this hole, down along the firewall, and then uh, run that out right in front of the, the, the passenger side front tire. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and start fitting that down in place. Now, as you're routing the cable, make sure you're keeping away from anything that would be hot, like uh, you know the exhaust, anything like that, and uh, and then pull it down through right around the fender well area in the back side of the fender well. our driver's side harness. Now this is the one that does have that yellow wire I was talking about. Now this has got to go across the top of the engine bay. We've already got a wire harness that's going across there, so we're just going to go ahead and follow that and tie it off as we go. And this is where we can start using some of the other uh, wire ties that are in our kit. like to get these in place and not zip tie them all the way tight until I've got everything laid, laid out where I like it. And just like on the passenger side, we're just going to route this down along the back side of the wheel well, liner, and then down underneath the truck. All right, let's go ahead and finish pulling that harness through. Now, I've got this harness routed kind of right over top of our crash bar next to our body mount bolt coming from that wheel well liner. Uh, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this portion of uh, our harness. What we've got here, this part is going to plug into our motor, and this part is actually going to plug into our light bar that goes on the outside of the running board. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and route this up above here, bring it over so it's accessible. I'm going to go ahead and plug in our motor. So we'll bring that up, plug that in, you'll hear it click. And once you hear it click, you'll see our little red tab. Push that red tab to the side, that locks it in place. Now this right here, we're going to go ahead and connect our light bar plug. You'll hear that click. Once that's in place, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll tie this off back here with some zip ties. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and run this back. What we've got, we've got a yellow trigger wire. I'll show you what to do with that in a little bit. Um, we've also got our two ends that are going to go to our LED lights. Uh, on the rocker panel. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and route those back and I'll show you how to connect those. 
All right, right now we're focused on our rear bracket location. I'm going to show you guys how to install our LED rocker panel lights. Now, these are definitely different from our LED light bar. This is on the outside. This is actually going to shine down uh, onto the step and onto the ground beneath it a little bit to give you some illumination uh, where you're stepping in and out. Um, now, these need to run through our pinch weld. So you're going to notice we've actually got a little hole that's in our pinch weld already. This particular truck is a company vehicle. We've had a, a few different sets of amp research steps on it, so we've already got uh, the holes in the pinch weld. So if you don't have the holes in the pinch weld, what you're going to need to do is from your rear location, you're going to see these two rivets just forward of your rear bracket location. In between there is where you need to put the hole. So what you're going to do is measure about a half inch down. It's about halfway down that rocker panel. You're going to take a punch and tap a, a hole or a, a divot in, in the, uh, in the uh, pinch weld and then drill that with a pilot hole and then follow it up with a 1964 drill bit uh, and then deburr that and then put the grommet in place. The grommet that's in here looks just like that right there. So it's going to pop in and protect your, uh, your wire from uh, the, the edges of that aluminum. Uh, now this right here is our light. We're going to fit that in from the front to the inside. So we're just going to squeeze these together. This is kind of a tight fit, but uh, just kind of push that through. Now I like to get this far enough in to where it's basically right where it needs to be uh, on a rocker panel to attach. We're not going to attach this rocker panel yet. First we're going to attach this to our harness. So let me go ahead and bring the harness over. Uh, now make sure you've got about 3 8 uh, inch of wire exposed and ready to crimp. Uh, we've got our heat shriek butt connectors in our kit. Get those lined up here. We're going to connect them to the harness first. Next, on the other side, we're going to do red to red and black to black. So pull away uh, the insulation that covers it. Get that in place and crimp that down. All right. And next, what we're going to do is take a heat gun and shrink these down. All right, so now here we are on the outside of the rocker panel. Um, now, what we've got here is we've got some 3M tape that's on the back side of our uh, light, and that's going to go right up against our rocker panel right there. So what we're going to do uh, first is we're going to clean off the edge of the rocker panel with some alcohol prep pad. Uh, make sure you clean off uh, that surface with alcohol before you try to adhere, otherwise you're not going to get a good bond. Uh, so. But clean that up real good. Go ahead and pull off the protective film. Want to bring it up, set it in place. And once it's in place, you want to bear down for about 15 to 20 seconds with some really good pressure. That's going to give you the best bond. And once we're done with this, we'll repeat the same on the front bracket location for its light. Just refer to your instructions on exactly where that's going to happen on the front. Okay, now I've got everything buttoned up with zip ties, everything secured out of the way. Everything is pretty much done on the driver's side that's th that happens on the passenger side. So everything we've already done on this side, we'll be repeating on the passenger side. Only one extra thing on the driver's side that doesn't happen on the passenger side is routing this yellow trigger wire. So if you look directly above where your bracket is in the floorboard, you're going to see a grommet. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of push up on that grommet and we're going to slide it to the side and then we're going to take our yellow trigger wire and we are going to run that 
up into the floorboard panel. And then what I'm going to do once I've got this kind of in place where it's going to stay is I'm going to go inside the cab of the truck and we're going to show you how to pull everything back like the carpet and all that so we can access this wire and pull it the rest of the way through. There we go. Now we've got it all nice in place down below. We can go ahead and snug this down up top. All right, let me go ahead and clean up this harness. All right, now we are inside the cab, just inside the driver's side door. Here's our sill plate. First thing we need to do is pull our sill plate off. That just comes right off. We're just gonna kind of pry it up and then just pop it out of place and set it off to the side. Next, what we're gonna do is this rubber trim, we're gonna kind of peel up just so that we can gain access to this portion right here. We're gonna pull up on that. Once that's pulled up, we can kind of pull straight back on it and pull that out and push that out to the side as well. Now what we can do is we can start to lift up our carpet. Now directly underneath our carpet, we are gonna have, uh, here is our, our trigger wire we just ran up through. We're gonna pull that all the way through. And then we're gonna get our rubber grommet that we had in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a knife and I'm going to make a small hole in the rubber grommet. And then I'm going to take the wire, now that it was going down in this direction, so I'm going to take the wire, I'm going to push it through the rubber grommet. Pull it all the way through and then it's going to be a little bit hard to see but I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the rubber grommet. Let's fit back into place and pull the, the wire until it's nice and taut. Uh, now I'm going to route that wire this way. And what I have here is the end of the wire. I'm going to need to strip away about 3 eighths of an inch of wire uh, to be able to connect that to my OBD2 uh, port. There we go. All right, now the way these connect is you got a PosiTap connector. Um, now this has the same end on both sides. So what we're going to do is unscrew one end. And we're gonna slide that over top of our wire. Um, now this right here, we don't want that to be super tight. We want that to be able to connect. So we're gonna kind of fray that out a little bit. And this portion of the connector, as we hold this uh, tight, we're gonna push that in place and then screw it back onto the connector cap, and that's on there nice and tight. We're gonna do the same thing on this side for our OBD2 connector. We've got our yellow wire. We're gonna do the same thing there. I've already got 3 eighths of an inch stripped off of that. Push that through. Spray that out a little bit. Push those together, and as we're kind of keeping pressure on it, we're going to screw that together. And now we got a nice tight connection. Next, we're going to run these uh, wires up underneath the dash. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up underneath the dashboard, kind of behind our OBD2 port and up above our emergency brake cable. Uh, we've got a plastic module that's right here. Now, you'll be able to see right here there is a square tab that if you push in on that tab, you can actually pull down on the module, and the module will actually pull all the way down. All right, and bringing this down makes this all a lot easier to get to. Now, I want to point out we've got two cables coming in. We got one going into um, kind of a white plug and one going into the black plug. The black plug is the one we're going to be focused on. And I've already got these two wires kind of pulled out. So we've got one wire that's a green wire, it's got a blue stripe on it, and one wire that's a white wire uh, with a green stripe. So what we're going to do is the other two wires we got here from our OBD2 connector, uh, we've got a blue and a white, 
The white one is going to be going to the green one with the blue stripe. The blue one is going to be going to the white one with the green stripe. Uh, so the way we're going to connect those is just like this. We've got these uh, PosiTap connectors as well. We're going to unscrew the black uh, cap and you'll notice there's a little groove in that black cap. So what we're going to do is take this wire and run it into that groove. Next we're going to take the other end of the PosiTap and we've got a, little, a sharp little point that we're going to put that in and screw that in place. And what that's going to do is that's going to pierce the insulation and make connection to that wire. Right? Now that we've got that in, we're going to take the other end off, the red cap off. Uh, now the red cap is kind of very similar to the one that we just were working with. Um, so we're going to take and slide our wire up through and make sure it's a little bit frayed. And then we are going to connect like so. Make sure you keep pressure on that wire pushing in as we screw it down. And then that should be nice and connected. And we're going to do the same uh, process with the blue wire to the white with green stripe wire. All right, now that that's all connected, what we're going to do is we're going to slide this back up into place. Once it's slid into place, that will automatically click in. And then we can hide all of this stuff back behind uh, our, our, uh, our, our factory covers and make sure everything's secured out of the way. And then we'll be plugging this into our OBD2 port. Okay, now I've got the factory module snapped back in place. I'm going to go ahead and route our yellow trigger wire underneath our carpet, make sure everything is kind of out of the way. Um, next, what I'm going to do is take this factory panel and put it back in place. The way you want to do that is first fish this up into here and then rotate its clip into place behind it. And then this clip down here needs to drop down into its place. Then we're going to go ahead and put our rubber gasket back in. All right, and next we're going to go ahead and take our sill plate and then look as you're dropping the clips down in, make sure all the clips are lining up. Pop that down. All right, and finally, we can go ahead and plug our OBD2 connector into our OBD2 port. Make sure that all of our wires are tucked out of the way, out of any away from anything that might move underneath the dash. Next, we can go ahead and get back underneath the hood and reconnect our fuses. All right, here we are back underneath the hood at the three fuse holders. Now, this one is going to be a 30 amp. This is our 10 amp, and this right here is another 30 amp. So let's go ahead and install those. I'm going to put the first 10 amp in. And then the 230s. All right, there we go. With everything installed, we can go ahead and test the operation. And then we can go ahead and install the app on our mobile device. Now that is available for Apple and for Android. It's a very simple installation and it will walk you through every step of the process. Well, that concludes the installation. If you found this video helpful, make sure and give us a thumbs up. If you want to know more about the product, check the link in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, call the experts or visit us online at realtruck.com.